thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. The second encounter happened with the same son in August of 2009. He was going to cut some firewood which they used to supplement their heating in the winter from the beetle kill trees on their property. He took their wood truck and drove about a hundred yards downhill from their driveway to the area. He turned off the truck, took out the chainsaw, started it, and got ready to start cutting wood. When he turned, he states that a large, dark, hairy man stood up from the bushes and looked at him. He described it as being around eight feet tall and looking a lot like a silverback gorilla, but standing upright, with a somewhat pointed head and almost a human face. He got scared and dropped the chainsaw and drove back up to the house and told his parents. They of course did not believe him. They felt that he had seen a bear or something until one of them had the final sighting of their own. This brings us to the sighting which occurred on September 7, 2010. On that morning, the witness states it started out as normal by letting the dogs out to do their business. They own three dogs and each morning they need to be let out. Being that they did not have front steps, they use the side door, which has three steps to the ground. The witness opened the door and let all three dogs out, who immediately turned around and headed back into the house. The witness thought this was very weird, as they have never done that before. So he decided to step out on the top step and see what the problem was. As he did, he noticed a large seven-foot-tall creature walking downhill from his right to the left at a range measured in person of 76 feet. The morning was bright and the sun was shining directly on it, so he got an excellent view. As he noticed it, it apparently realized he was there and turned to face him standing on the steps. As it faced him, it let out a loud scream, which seemed to go right through him, also heard by the other parent who was still in bed. When the scream happened, the witness broke down and began to cry uncontrollably. He said that it was like all of his pent-up emotions were released all at once. As they were standing there looking at each other, him crying, he was able to get a very good look at it as it was standing with the sun shining on it. The witness described the color as being black or dark brown with a red tint from the sunlight with dark colored skin. The hair was around four to five inches in length and was not matted or meshed up. He said that when it turned to look at him, it had to turn its body towards him as well. He described the face as having very human-like qualities, but yet different. The eyes were dark and slightly larger than you would think for a human of the same size. A slightly protruding brow ridge. The nose was kind of flattened with nostrils opening forward. The mouth was what appeared to be of normal size with wispy hair between the nose and mouth. As the creature stood looking at him, he said he also noticed that its arms were longer, coming down nearly to its knees, and it had hands which seemed large. He also stated that he believes it was a female because it had what he says were definitely breasts. The creature's body was described as being very bulky, but not fat, guest weight of around 500 pounds. After a few minutes of standing looking at each other, the witness crying, the creature changed its expression as if to question what was wrong with the witness, then turned and continued downhill in the direction it was heading originally. When it gave the quizzical look to the witness, it seemed to have a definite intelligence about it. As it had turned and continued on its way, the witness said he was impressed by the muscular build that was visible through the hair. He stated you could see all of the separate muscles flex as it walked away. 
One other interesting note was that as it walked away, the witness remarked that he noticed the soles of the feet as it picked them up and stepped forward and thought to himself, that's why they called them Bigfoot. The area of the sighting was clear of any obstructions and slightly uphill from where the witness was standing. So he got a very good look at it. The witness was very insistent that the sighting lasted minutes, not seconds. During our week-long visit to the area, I had set up six trail cams and a small tent with an audio recorder in it around the property. Unfortunately, I was unable to obtain anything definitive. The area is very remote with roads that are in poor repair, which keeps traffic to a minimum. The terrain is very steep with mixed red pine and spruce growth. The ground is very rocky, covered in pine needles. It is occupied by a large number of deer, elk, many smaller animals, and birds. There are also a couple of spring-fed creeks that wind downhill past their home. On day two, I was taken to a small ridge high above his home so I could see the lay of the land. While up there, we did some call blasting using the Sierra sounds. After a few series of blasts, we had a return whoop from across the valley. It was a single, very clear whoop. I asked the witness what was over there, and he stated that there were lots of caves that he had never went into. Also, it is all private property. We were introduced to a neighbor who owns a cabin uphill from the witness, who one night had the moon blocked from coming in her bathroom window. I went to her cabin and found that there were no trees close enough to have blocked the moon. Nor would a normal height person be capable of blocking the moon from entering the window. It would have had to have been at least seven and a half feet tall and right beside the cabin wall to have blocked the moon. The cabin owner stated she woke up to use the bathroom and noticed that something was standing outside the window swaying back and forth blocking the light from entering. She described it as being human in form and was too scared to investigate further. She also said she has many times heard different vocalizations that she described as being almost ape-like. She appeared to be very sincere and credible. She is a Gulf War veteran and has not been known to get nervous easily. She hikes all over the mountainside and has encountered most of the animals that live there. One other interesting note was that there is a cabin near the witness's home that had the exterior door busted in. The witness said that he thought it was caused by kids from town, but when I inspected it, there was no evidence of forced entry or prying of any kind, nor was the door dented or scratched. The door appeared to have been pushed with great force inward as the jam and frame was split in many areas. The cabin itself is unfinished and had evidence of being occupied by pack rats, a potential food source. There are numerous caves and lava tubes in the area which we were hoping to explore, but we ran out of time. The area warrants a much longer and better investigation, as it is no doubt a perfect area for a family of Sasquatch to live. They have everything they need from water, shelter, food, to lack of human pressure or hunting. Most of the land is private and little if any hunting takes place here. The witness and his family are very real and sincere people. I truly believe they are being honest and truthful in everything they have reported. They are not looking to have their names or location published as they would like to remain anonymous. They value their privacy. I think they have been fortunate enough to have had not only one of the best encounters, but also multiple encounters. I am planning on making more trips to the area to investigate more thoroughly. Update. I have spoken to the witness a number of times since being at his home, and they continue to have vocalizations and knocking around their property, but to date have not had any more visual encounters. Also, when I was there, I had placed candy bars and a peanut butter jar cover on peanut butter smeared on the outside, out for bait. 
Sometime after leaving the witness had checked the peanut butter jar, the cover had been taken off and the peanut butter was gone. He refilled the jar, replaced the cover, and again the peanut butter was gone. This has happened a number of times.